When dealing with digital audio, input signals need to be made discrete. To achieve this, the signal is sampled at separate points in time, and the amount of samples taken per second is determined by the sampling rate. Intuitively, the sampling rate should be dependent on the frequency content of the signal, since we need to be able to capture fast changes. This raises the question, how often do we need to sample the original signal in order to perfectly represent it in the digital domain? This is the question answered by the shannon nyquist sampling theorem, which states that you need to sample it at a rate which is at least twice the frequency of the highest frequency component in the signal. If we do not sample at a high enough rate, the reconstructed signal may not resemble the original. This phenomenon is known as aliasing. In this example, the original sinusoid is undersampled. If we try to recover the original signal by interpolating between the samples, we find that the signal we get is of lower frequency. Given a periodic signal, we can use the Fourier transform to see its frequency content. The sampling process can be represented as a multiplication of the original signal with a unit pulse train. Since the frequency domain representation of a pulse train is also a pulse train, and multiplication in the time domain is the same as convolution in the frequency domain, sampling the signal results in shifted copies of the original magnitude spectrum, with the distance between them dependent on the sampling frequency. As the sampling frequency gets smaller, these shifted copies will move closer together, and higher sampling rates mean that they will be further away from each other. As we can see, overlap, i.e. aliasing, will occur when the highest frequency component in the signal is greater than half the sampling rate. This frequency overlap means that the frequency content of the signal has changed. If the sampling rate is exactly equal to twice the highest frequency component, we still may not be able to recover the signal correctly. Here we have a cosine wave sampled at twice its frequency, with the sample points coloured red. In this case, we can successfully recover the original signal by interpolating between the samples. However, it could happen that the sample points occur exactly at the zero points of the wave, in which case we would not be able to distinguish it from a flat signal. This is the worst case scenario. To deal with aliasing, a simple strategy, if we have a fixed sampling rate, is to low pass filter the signal using a cutoff at half the sampling frequency, removing the problem frequencies which would cause aliasing. This is called an anti aliasing filter. In practice, an ideal cutoff filter cannot be realized leading to attenuation of the higher frequencies. Therefore, we can oversample the signal before filtering so as not to attenuate any of the desired high frequency content.